I look at my life today and it's barely recognizable. It's barely recognizable. I'm, you know, when Joseph was talking, I, I grew up down the road in L.A. with all those plastic people. And when he was telling his story that he said he was going to think that I love you, I thought, did he say it out loud? Because then they really looked the other way. <laughs> then I realized he was saying he was in his head thinking. Well, I grew up in L.A. and I grew up in an environment that was less than conducive to the thought of possibility. I lived between the Harlem Crip 30s and the Rolling 60s. And I had three fights a week to get home from school. I just thought it was exercise. <laughs> it's like, oh, this is how you do it. I'm run fast. <laughs> Got my cardio in. And I, my highest grade in school was a C plus in all 12 years. My English teacher, the last time I took an English class, she said to me in front of the entire class, quote unquote, Lisa, you have to be the weakest writer I've ever met in my entire life. I found out what I was good at by finding out what I really sucked at. Uh, I had a job as an accounts receivable clerk in accounts receivable. I shouldn't be around numbers. <laughs> Unless I'm just making a lot of money, I should not be counting the money. But I remember my, I, got, I had a client who called, and well, I called her, and I was supposed to collect money from her, and she gave me a story as to why she couldn't pay, and it was a really good story. I said, yeah, girl, that's good. Don't worry about it. I'm going to take your name off the list. I'm not going to have them bother you anymore. And I guess she referred a few people to call me for collections. And I remember the day my boss called me into the office, and she said, Lisa, come in and sit down. And I said, okay. She said, what do you want to do in this company? No, what do you want to do in life? I said, I thought it was a test of my loyalty. I want to rise to the top of this company. I want to be the accounts receivable manager. <laughs> and she cringed. <laughs> I was like, what is that about? And she said, tell me what you do when you talk to clients. I said, well, I listen. I tell them that they have to pay and that they're behind. Then I listen. And some of them have really good ex reasons why they can't pay. And so I just, I support them. <laughs> How do you support them? Well, I, I delete their name from the list because they don't have money and you're going to call them again if I keep their name on the list. So I just help you by taking their name off the list, help them by taking their name off the list. Just handle that. I handle it for you. <laughs> and she said, so you're a really nice girl, but you are really bad at accounts receivable. And then I realized this meeting was not about my advancement in the company. <laughs> and I said, oh, my God, are you firing me? She said, no, I'm not firing you. I'm just releasing you to find your dream. <laughs> and I said, so do I come back tomorrow? <laughs> like, I'm 24. I got bills. Just tell me, am I coming? No, you're not coming back tomorrow. You're going to spend the day at home finding your dream. And that was the first of me being fired five times. So I tell you. I discovered what I was good at by checking off the box about what I really sucked at. And I remember the last time I was unemployed, I was frustrated because I had been unemployed for three months. I had been fired from my fifth job. And I was frustrated because my car had just got repoed. Um, rent was due. My roommates were pissed at me. And I had cramps, PMS. <laughs> was not a good day. Do not cross my path, right? The head does spin around. And I'm lying in bed, and I have the, the newspapers all, you know, because there was a time we found jobs in the newspapers. And the newspapers were all laid across my bed, and across in them were circled all of these accounting jobs, because that's where I had been trained. But it wasn't where my heart was. And every time I circled a job, accounts receivable, accounts payable, you know, I, whatever it was, I got sick to my stomach, energy. It was just, it would drop. But I knew I needed a job. And so I was laying in bed with an attitude, flicking the, turning the remote control with an attitude. And this man came across the screen and I thought, wow, there's a man, a black man on stage with a suit on, handsome. I'm going to look a little while. And it was Les Brown. And... Les was telling a story. He told a story that changed my life. He said there was this man walking past the house, and a little old lady was rocking, a little old man was rocking in their rocking chair, and the dog was giving an agonizing moan. Mm. He said, what's wrong with that dog? 
He walked past the house the second day on his way to work, and the little lady's rocking, the little old man's rocking, and the dog's giving the same agonizing moan. Mm. He said, if I pass that house again tomorrow and that dog's doing that same moan, I'm going to ask the lady, what's up with your dog? <laughs> so the third day passes the house, lady's rocking in her rocking chair, sipping on some lemonade. The man's rocking his rocking chair, reading the paper, and the dog's giving the same excruciating moan. Mm. So he did as he promised himself. He said, excuse me, ma'am, why is your dog moaning? She said, well, honey, he's lying on the nail. And he said, well, if he's lying on the nail and it hurts, why don't he move? She said, "Cause, baby, it hurts just enough for him to moan about it. Not enough for him to move yet. <laughs> and right at that moment, I realized lying in my bed unemployed, you know, my car repo, rent's due, I'm pissed off. I was lying on a bed of nails, not just one. And so I just stopped by Vegas. Yesterday, I woke up in Temecula. I spent the morning in Garden Grove speaking. I spent the evening in Coronado Island speaking. I woke up this morning and, had, and today and had lunch in Vegas. And before the end of the week, I'll be in another country. And so I just stopped by. I stopped by to tap on your heart a bit and to ask you, what are you willing to do this year that you haven't done yet? What are you willing to do this year that will make your knees knock and your teeth chatter? Are you willing to redefine yourself until your life is barely recognizable? Are you willing to boldly go where you have never gone before? Say what you've never said before and do what you've never done before so you can be the man or the woman you know yourself to be. Are you willing? Are you willing to surprise the hell out of yourself? Are you willing to scare the people around you where they say something happened to him that day? They went to some TED event and nothing was the same. Are you willing? Are you willing to allow the dream in you to be birthed? Are you willing to find that thing that you were born to do? That if you don't do it, you know your life is incomplete. Because what I know is that you're not afraid to die. You're afraid to die without doing that thing. You don't want to die before they see your, your, your vision, your voice, your essence. That's what you're really afraid of. Hell, dying is just resting in peace. You don't have to do anything then. It's living that makes your knees knock. Are you willing? Are you willing to love yourself like you've never done before? Are you willing to be unapologetic about your greatness? Are you willing to stop keeping score on the things you didn't do so well back then? I still don't do accounting well, but my CPA does. <laughs> are you willing? Are you willing to stand in your greatness and stand on your story? All those things, all those reasons, that failed relationship, the weight, the family, all the, the, the molestation, all the stuff that comes up whenever you're about to do great. You say, but I can't because are you willing to stop making that your fortress and make it your fuel? Are you willing? See, I'm just a girl from South Central who lived between the Harlem Crip 30s and the rolling 60s, who had three fights a week to get home from school. Who, the last time I had, took English, remember? I got a fail, and my English teacher told me I was the weakest writer she ever met in her entire life. I'm still that girl. I don't stand in that story. I stand on that story. Because in addition to her, I'm that seven-time best-selling author. In addition to her, I'm the CEO of two multi-million dollar businesses. In addition to her, I'm an international speaker and trainer. In addition to her, I'm the woman who in six months will be taking my company public. That's who I am. All of that makes up me. Unapolog unapologetically, it makes up me. So I ask you, as I stop by Vegas to stir your soul, as I stop by Vegas to make you mildly, to moderately, to significantly uncomfortable in mediocrity, I don't want to help you get a good night's sleep tonight. I want to keep you up tonight thinking, how can I make my life barely recognizable? How can I get drastic with it? 
How can I do it like my life depended on it? If you want to see an awesome video of a young Mel Robbins, check out the link right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. You want to figure out how to take care of uh, the elders and start a new hospice center? You want to move to Africa and build a school? Guess what? I look at my life today and it's barely recognizable. It's barely recognizable. I'm, you know, when Joseph was talking, I, I grew up down the road in LA with all those plastic people. And when he was telling his story that he said he was going to think that I love you, I thought, did he say it out loud? Because then they really looked the other way. <laughs> then I realized he was saying he was in his head thinking. When I grew up in LA and I grew up in an environment that was less than conducive to the thought of possibility. I lived between the Harlem Crip 30s and the Roland 60s. And I had three fights a week to get home from school. I just thought it was exercise. <laughs> like, oh, this is how you do it. I don't run fast. <laughs> Got my cardio in. And I, my highest grade in school was a C plus in all 12 years. My English teacher, the last time I took an English class, she said to me in front of the entire class, quote unquote, Lisa, you have to be the weakest writer I've ever met in my entire life. I found out what I was good at by finding out what I really sucked at. <laughs> uh, I had a job as a accounts receivable clerk.